In a shocking twist, Joe Biden might actually not be on the Ohio general election ballot, which is crazy because that could mean he could lose. But I wonder if the real strategy of Democrats is to win in Missouri and Texas based on those weird voter registration numbers we saw last week. I don't know if you guys saw that story, but uh, something like Tens of thousands of dead people tried to register to vote without IDs in Missouri in the week of February 7th, the week ending February 17th. So I wonder if they don't actually care about Ohio. And by allowing Republicans to shift all their focus on these swing states, while Democrats focus on winning what should be reliably red states, it will throw Republicans for a loop when the 1.25 million registrants in Texas, no IDs, all vote Democrat. We'll see. But this is kind of wild. In one of the most crucial elections imaginable, Biden could be off the Ohio ballot. Fox News says President Biden may fail to get on Ohio's general election ballot for the state's top election official warned his campaign about missing a key deadline on Friday. Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose, a Republican, notified top Democratic officials that their party's national convention is scheduled scheduled to occur well past the deadline for certifying a presidential candidate in, in, in Ohio. Quote, the Democratic National Convention is scheduled to convene on August 19th, 2024, which occurs more than a week after the August 7th deadline to certify a presidential candidate to the office. I am left to conclude the Democratic National Committee must either move up its nominating convention or the Ohio General Assembly must act by May 9th, 2024, 90 days prior to a new law's effective date to create an exception to the statutory requirements, LaRose legal counsel, Paul DeSantis, it's DeSantis, wrote in the letter. This is interesting. Biden's campaign did not immediately respond to a request for comment from Fox News Digital on Sunday, but told ABC News that they were monitoring the situation in Ohio and remain confident that Joe Biden will be on the ballot in all 50 states. The Ohio Democratic Party has yet to respond publicly to LaRose's letter. News letter came the same day, an internal memo showing panic within the Democratic Party over its nonpartisan voter registration efforts, potentially helping former President Trump. Democrats across the country have become increasingly concerned over the amount of support Trump is pulling from usually reliable demographics and donors have been bickering over an internal memo casting doubt on whether the party should continue using nonprofits to register unregistered voters over fears it could help Trump win. Indeed, if we were to blindly register non-voters and get them on the rolls, we would be distinctly aiding Trump's quest for a personal dictatorship, the memo, memo explained, casting doubt on the longstanding Democrat voter registration push that typically has resulted in favorable results in previous elections. That is to say, my friends, when they go to non-voters and say, would you want to register to vote? They go, sure. And then they go, great. And then the person goes, I'm voting Trump. And they go, no. Reminds me of South Park when they were trying to vote for the uh, school mascot. And it was a giant douche and a turd sandwich. And they're trying to convince Stan to vote. And he's like, I don't care. I don't care care to choose between a giant douche and a turd sandwich. And then Kyle's like, man, you got to vote. And he's like, okay, then I vote for this guy. And then Kyle's like, wait, 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 what? That's the other guy. Don't vote for him. Wait, don't vote. Don't vote. Go back to not voting. That's the game. Democrats are realizing that their once noble and valiant efforts at registering non-voters is actually helping Donald Trump. The memo argues that Democrats should focus their registration efforts only in specific heavily pro-Biden populations. And the Washington Post explained that the rise in Trump support among non-registered voters has run up against a long-held Democratic policy priority of growing their voter rolls. Ah, heavens, how unfortunate for Democrats. But let's jump down to the Electoral College map and take a look at what might happen. Ohio appears to be reliably red right now. These are the predictions. They say it will take 270 electoral votes to win the 2024 presidential election. Click on states in this interactive map to create your own 2024 election forecast. Create a specific uh, matchup by clicking the party in our names near the electoral vote counter. Use the buttons below to share your forecast, blah, blah, blah. So my understanding is that the current uh, map breakup right now, excuse me, is based on polling. I could be wrong, but I believe it is where we can see that Texas is reliably red. And uh, well, I shouldn't say reliably, but it's strongly red, moderately red. We have PA. So let's play this game. Let's say that Ohio stays red. Let's go. Rely- Biden's not even on it. So they, they got it. They got it. OK, let's say Wisconsin goes Trump. Michigan goes Trump. Pennsylvania goes Trump. Georgia goes Trump. Arizona goes Trump. Nevada goes Trump. Why? 
That's 312 to Democrats, 226. Sorry, Joe Biden. Looks like you can't win this one. But then something happens. There's a weird voter registration thing happening in Missouri. There's a weird voter registration thing happening in Texas. And there you have it. If Trump wins every single one of these up for gra- uh, these states that are up for grabs, but Texas and Missouri go blue, Democrats win 276 electoral votes. I believe Texas is winner take all. Uh, let's make I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Let's make sure. Electoral college, because maybe it's not. Uh, yeah, courts uphold Texas winner take all system of electoral votes for, for president. We have seen 1.25 million newly registered voters who do not have IDs, according to the Help America Voter Verification System from the Social Security Administration. If this is how it plays out, look at this. Let's say Wisconsin, deep red, Michigan, deep red, Pennsylvania, deep red, North Carolina, deep red, Georgia, deep red, Arizona, deep red, Nevada, deep red. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they all go for Trump. If Texas and Missouri flip, Joe Biden wins. Now, that'll be interesting. But the challenge here is we don't actually know how, or I should say, not so much a challenge, but we don't actually know what Texas will become, whether Missouri will be red. And now it's looking based on this map that Texas and Missouri will be red, meaning Republicans are likely going to win 312 electoral votes if they were to secure. Let's say Nevada goes blue, right? So let's say it's light blue. Let's say Arizona definitely goes blue because their voting machines are going to break. Uh, I don't even know. So Georgia, let's say Georgia goes blue. Look, so long as the Republicans win Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina, you got it. Trump's going to win. The worrying thing is 1.25 million registered voters with no, no IDs. Missouri and Texas seem to be the anomalies. Arizona seems to be the anomaly. So let's play this game. Let's say Nevada does go red. Let's say Missouri goes blue. Texas goes blue. It, Texas really is the key here. Democrats score 303. Let's say Georgia goes red. Democrats will get 287 in this scenario. Even if Missouri doesn't, Missouri stays red. It's 277 to 261. Texas is the most important play right now. And while I believe I can, where's that reset button? I be, Currently, I believe this is based on polling makeup. The states that seem to be up for grabs are PA, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Nevada. North Carolina is leaning Republican ever so slightly. Here's the crazy thing. Texas is also not strongly. It's, a, it's in the middle. It could go one way or the other. It's going to be interesting. I don't think Joe Biden cares about Ohio. I think the Democrat playbook right now is going to be for Texas. And they're going to make an argument that people from California moved out, went to Arizona and went to Texas. And that turned the state blue. We've been seeing this mass mass exodus from New York, Illinois and California. People don't want to live in these lockdown states and they're going to Texas and Florida, which should indicate Texas and Florida stay reliably red. Then you take a look at what's happening at Eagle Pass. The argument is that they're giving voter right, voting rights to illegal immigrants. Not rights, but they're giving them work permits, which grant them social security numbers so they can register to vote. Their name appears in the system, and then they're granted their voter registration. I don't know if I believe that. Giving 1.25 million people work permits is crazy. What I think is more likely is that they're ballot harvesters. And they're going through a database of people who are not registered to vote, but residents, which shouldn't be too hard to find, actually. They then can see a list of people who've never voted. They can then, because they don't have their IDs, use the available information in these public databases, social security numbers a bit harder, and register them to vote. Where? Whatever address they want. Then the mail-in ballots will come, and they'll mail them all in. Universal mail-in voting should be shut down now. Republicans ain't going to do it, though. So certainly Republicans better understand what is happening. It's interesting, the interesting thing about this map is that it may not even be accurate. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? We could see some pretty weird changes based on demographic shifts, high crime. You see what's going on in Oakland with those street takeovers? We could see some pretty interesting stuff. 
Far be it from me. I don't know. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all then.